I'm just going to go ahead and open in prayer. And then will come in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pray. So, <laughs> dear Heavenly Father, I'm praying. <laughs> All right. Heavenly Father, thanks for this morning, Lord. Thanks for the opportunity to get together. As we gather in this building that we've dedicated to worship you, Lord, I pray that this morning would be used for that. Even our conversations among our small groups, Lord, and, and what we discuss, may you accept this as worship this morning, and I pray that you'd be pleased with our conversations. I pray that we would understand you in a new way this morning, Lord, that we could walk away loving you more and knowing how to do so. We do love you. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So welcome. Um, if you were with us two weeks ago, I guess, um, we started to look at, well, we continue to look at some of the fruit of the Spirit and some of the characteristics of that. And so a couple weeks ago, we looked at peace and patience. And so we're going to kind of carry on with the same format we've been doing as we'll take a week and discuss a topic in the theology, and then we'll take a week to review. And so this is our week to review. So we'll be reviewing peace and patience this morning. Um, and we're going to get pretty practical today, so I'm excited just to see how how we how peace and patience can work itself out in our lives and how it manifests itself. And so we'll just do a quick review um, of each one and then and then dive into the practicality of it. So um, three different types of peace that's described in the Bible that we talked about last week. The first one is spiritual, um, and that that refers to your your peace with God, your relationship with God. And so your spiritual peace, how are you with God and where are you at? And so if there's times in your life where you're not feeling that peace with God, that's a pretty important one. So you probably want to want to do what you can do to make that right with God, whether it's sin or just if you've, if you've stepped away, maybe you're not spending the time in the Bible or talking to him as much as usual um, or that you could. So there's that spiritual peace. That's an important part. The psychological peace is 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 more of what we think of when you think of peace. So it's like this, this inner feeling of peace, right? This inner well-being. Um, and the psychological peace is just kind of being at peace with circumstances in your life. And so um, how are you feeling, basically, is that one. It's just like this inner peace. And then the relational peace is obviously, are you at peace with other people? Other believers specifically, but are you at peace with the people that you're living with in your life? And so... Um, we have a spiritual peace is your relationship with God. Your psychological peace is kind of your inner feeling and then your relational peace with other people. Um, and then we talked about the word for peace, especially in the Old Testament. Well, in the Old Testament, it's a Hebrew word, shalom. And we talked about the different meanings of that. So it can mean completeness or whole in number. So there's times where God is talking to the, to the Israeli army and he says they return in peace. And that could be talking about them returning with a wholeness in number. So you could be talking about a group of people, like an army, um, having a whole, whole in number. Peace also means safety, and so I think that one relates to us. We can understand that one. Soundness in body, so your well-being. Um, and then welfare, health, and prosperity. We touched on the prosperity um, a little bit last week because a lot of the verses in the Old Testament, if you look it up, it says prosperity. And so for me, that was a surprise when I was studying for this because... I don't relate the word prosperity to the word peace. Um, I relate prosperity to like financial well-being, right? But there's a prosperity um, which is your, your well-being, your mind, right? God wants you to live in prosperity, and that includes your well-being like that um, inner peace, right? And so those were the, the words that define peace um, based on the word shalom in the Hebrew Bible. And then um, one verse, we had, a, we had a whole bunch of verses that we were looking at, so if you want to dive into this, um, you could go back to the live stream for last week. I decided just for the sake of our review, I would read this one verse from John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And so just a reminder that Peace is the Lord's. It's Jesus' peace. Jesus is speaking in this, and he is the one who gives us peace. And so as I was kind of reflecting, I didn't do a ton of um, prep for this week because we're going to review. But the prep that I did do and the conversations I had, I was reminded that, as, especially as we talk about peace and patience this morning, a reminder that we can't manifest these things in ourselves. Okay? These things come from God. These things come from Jesus. He is the one who supplies peace. It comes from him. And so... 
I think there's a reliance there on asking him to produce these things in you. As Pastor Chuck was preaching um, a, a few weeks ago, he reminded us that the fruit of the Spirit is something that we bear. It's not something that we produce. And for me, that was, that was meaningful because it was a reminder that no matter how hard I work or no matter how hard I try, I, I'm unable to produce these things on my own. But when the Holy Spirit is working inside of me, I'm just bearing his work in me. And so this, is, this verse is just a reminder that these things come from the Holy Spirit, comes from God. And so we just want to rely on him to be producing these things in our life. And we want to be bearing these things as he does so. So a piece of that as I was think, a piece of that, yeah. So a part of that as I was thinking about it is just the prayer part. Like how am I praying to ask God to produce these things in my life and asking him to allow me to be the bearer of these things. And so that was kind of what I came away with. We'll see. Um, I think there'll be a lot of takeaways this morning, but that was one for me. And so... All of that is just kind of review of the theology part of what we looked at, and so um, we're going to make it a little more practical this morning. So we've got an example of peace um, from the life or words of Jesus. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes in your group, not too long. We've got some stuff to get to, but can you think of an example from the life of Jesus or from the words of Jesus? I gave you one, John 14, 27. Don't use that one. Come up with your own. Um, but among your groups, I'll give you three or four minutes just share with each other an example of, pe uh, of peace from Jesus. You know, he's the one we, we want to be. Um, he is our example. And so let's follow him this morning and just go ahead and talk amongst your group about an example you can think of from the Bible. So go ahead.
All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off now. This is this part of class I really enjoy because I like hearing you guys just dig into the Bible. I hear references being spoken, and it's good conversations. I wish we could just kind of carry on with that. I would really encourage you guys, some of these questions are really good for small groups. I know some of you are meeting in small groups, but I mean, stay after class and jot these questions down. I think that a lot of good discussion in this class is part of what I like to hear when you guys have an opportunity to do this, but we'll keep moving on just for the sake of time, but you can remember that one and revisit it if you got into a good discussion. So that is from the example of Jesus. And so my question for you is, we'll do this by, by a show of hands. This thing is really bothering me. Um, how many of you, let's say this week or within the last two weeks, have recognized a need for peace in a circumstance in your life at any point? Yeah, I was going to say, if that's not everybody, you're sleeping through life, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, this is really applicable, and it's really good for us just to look and see how Jesus is modeling this. And so this thing is, Addison helped me with this. He said this was the good one, and this one keeps falling off. Um, I want to bring, um, bring up a friend of mine. His name is Jeff. So Jeff, you can come on up if you're ready. Um, I want to introduce Jeff for you. Um, I know Jeff from high school. Jeff was... Um, he was not only my counselor at camp at LGYC, um, but he was also the camp, what are they, program director, I think is what they would have called. So you can go ahead and turn your mic on. Um, so Jeff was kind of like in charge of camp for my eyes, just like this big guy who had it all together, really cool. I got I got a chance to have him as my counselor, so it was exciting for that. Um, and really look, f look, look up to this guy, just watching him lead so many people and um, had an impact in my life just as an example of someone who was leading others and um, really looked up to him. So what is a couple of years I've seen you come into Calvary now, and we've touched base a couple times? We have. My you might, you're probably on. You may not hear it in here, but it's good. It's online. Um, yeah, my parents are actually living on the camp right now. And nice and loud. So if you my can. parents are actually living on the camp right now in my grandmother's uh, old house, so there's been a draw. Calvary's been our summer home, I think... Um, through Howard and all the other different the pastors we've had, they've always said, come here in summer. So this has been like our summer home, and it's become more and more of our home um, during the, the winter. Yeah. But we want to drive up. You know, we drive up from Cary to be here, spend time with Mom and Dad, but enjoy the fellowship and um, the corporate gathering that you guys have. Yeah. So we've started kind of talking as I've seen you around the halls. And so, Jeff, why don't you share... Um, with the group, kind of what's been going on in your life um, over the last year and a half or so has it been or what? Sure. A um, little bit of the background on it. September last year, I'm listening to Moody Radio, and I just felt this calling when I'm listening to them talking about those that acknowledge my father on earth, I will acknowledge in heaven. And it challenged me to be bold. <clears throat> and I ended up, you know, started sharing with people more faith than I would normally do. And if there was an opportunity saying, all right, I got nothing to lose, let's, let's share. Um, which positioned me for what was to come next. Um, November 2nd, uh, I was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer that has metastasized into the um, liver and spleen. Uh, but praise God, God is good in everything that happens it's what is our perspective on how are we going to do it that waiting period between being in the hospital you know I, w I had to pain one time and then it went away and it's like God saying go to the hospital look at this that waiting period um, <clears throat> you know I think it was tough on the family to what's happening is a biopsy going to be positive or negative but I had a peace through it all I knew either way, I'm a treasured child of the Most High King. God is in control of whatever I'm going through. How am I going to choose to use it? And, it, you know, it, it tested, and I could see where God lined things up. Um, and I'll tell you, God's got a sense of humor. It absolutely does. Um, because I went to the oncologist, and when we, when we did that, one of the first things was, how bold are you going to be? 
and I talked to him and said, probably scared my wife Karen to death when I did this, but Doc, I'm not worried about the end of my life. I'm a Christian. I have a personal relationship. I know the outcome. I'm just not ready to go there yet because I got two boys. And his response was, good, I'm not, I'm not ready to have you go there yet. And we go through, and I said, this is just going to be the biggest wrestling match of my life because that was a sport that I did. We go through the whole meeting, and at the end of it, he goes, let's circle back. Only God can do this. Where did you wrestle? Well, Barrington Middle School, Barrington High School, Wheaton College. He goes, funny, I'm a wrestling coach at Barrington High School. <laughs> Only God does this. So you know, when you look, and I think part of going through the cancer it's changed my perspective where how do you see God? And I'm, I'm going to use my cheat sheets because, you know, I'm looking on here. And first off, there's no shame in whatever you're going through in life. God knows it's already. So if it can be used of God, use it. You know, be bold. Ask big. God does amazing things. Um, I've had 10 transfusions as part of this. I'm sitting in Good Shepherd Hospital, and again, God's amazing. I'm sitting, uh, going through, getting ready to have a colonoscopy, and nurse and I end up talking about sometime between midnight and whatnot, and we got on the topic of, you know, where did you go to church, you know, talking about peace and stuff, and somehow I had mentioned that, well, my aunt and uncle went to that church. She spins around, she goes, Diane and I were in a Bible study. God lines up things when you look for it. One closer to home for you guys. I was in the hospital Christmas Eve, and I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm watching your New Year's Eve service, watching the announcements being made, watching Chuck speak, and the lady comes in. And I just peacefully said, look, you're welcome to come in. You can check whatever, but I want to listen to the service, and if you don't mind, you can listen to it too. She goes, where is it at? I said, Calvary. She goes, is that Calvary in Williams Bay? She goes, I know people that go there. I was at Lake Geneva Youth Camp. Again, God orchestrates things in our lives when we look for them. And I think the biggest thing I can say, this, the peace that I've had is this has been a renaissance going through this and just being able to see. I don't want to say that cancer is fun because that's not fair to say. But God has blessed me going through this where I look forward to seeing how is God going to use stuff that's happening in everyday life. <clears throat> I'm on the phone, just a real example, I'm on the phone with Blue Cross Blue Shield on Friday looking at benefits. The lady goes, I'm sorry about your cancer. I said, no, praise God. He's working. My cancer's shrinking. She goes, amen. That's an open door. We ended up talking. Turns out it was the last call of the day. I had been transferred from the Philippines to talk to her in the States. And I'm connected with Tanya, another Christian, because this is how God works. He has a plan for us in everything. And when we go through it <clears throat> and we look at it, you know, it's peace. You know, I, I looked up the definition of peace because I wanted to understand, you know, more about it and what is it. And it's, you know, the one that I had was freedom from disturbance and tranquility. In the last couple months, just looking at this and having that perspective change, <clears throat> there's a peace. <clears throat> I, I look back and I look in the grounding, and I would say, live your legacy. If you've had a blessing of having a heritage of a Christian family, lean into it. Lean into the other people in your life. If you haven't, build one. Start now and build it. <clears throat> because I will tell you, going through this, I a wonderful cousin, Ari, that went through stage four, she reached out to me. And the first thing Ari did, she goes, you got to have your verse. You know, and she's like, if this, this is part of what gives me peace. It's Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And it, it was hit, hit me as I looked at this. I, okay, I knew the be strong and courageous part about it, but when we face how are we supposed to look at peace, I look at the first line as, have I not commanded you? 
we are commanded to seek God for our peace. You know, he's the rock that I built this upon. Now, in the story we are going through, God's blessed me. After four rounds of uh, chemo, we had 50% shrinkage in the liver spots and in the spleen. After eight rounds of chemo, <laughs> the surgeon said, I'm not giving you false hope. This is real hope. You have visible shrinkage. And you know, it was so good. fun to say, yes, I have a team of people praying for me. You guys are praying. One of the first things I did when we talked about peace is Addison's not in here, is he? Use your resources in your Christian family. I didn't know Addison from Adam, but I reached out to him, and the day I got diagnosed, Adam, or, sorry, Addison, can you send me a list of praise songs, upbeat songs that will lift you up? Because I think praise brings peace. When you start to focus and you are praising, it drives everything else out. We used to do this. I use the time with the kids in the car because I commuted, and we made a decision to put them into a Christian school, and they had a half hour there. we drive and we'd use the cell phone time to pray. And if we got a little attitude, which sometimes teenagers do, okay, guys, each of you give me two, three things you're thankful for. And it's amazing how it changes your attitude and your perspective. So I would say use it. Pastor Chuck, oh, my goodness, um, gave me a little pamphlet, Don't Waste Your Cancer, <laughs> talking about how to go through and use it. Um, it's fun to be here. You guys may remember this we were up here the day i got diagnosed or the, the, the week i got diagnosed chuck was talking and he was talking about the harvest moon and how bright it was that that day and that sorry christian i got to do this one um when i looked at it he was talking about how the moon has no light of its own and it is a reflection of the sun and i've jokingly um, told people i want to moon everybody I want to be a reflection of the S-O-N. See, I think God created humor. So if you laugh at that and you remember, yeah, we're going to moon everybody. But in doing that, I want to be a reflection of Christ. I mean, that's peaceful because you can't do anything wrong when you're with Christ. I mean, when, you, when your focus is that way, if you stumble on the words, it doesn't matter. For me, my peace comes. It's my testimony. I'm not called to save anybody I am called to live a life that reflects Christ so if I'm a reflection great I mean God is you know this is where God's blessing has come in I'm a reflection at work because they're still amazed that God has blessed me to be able to work through chemo um, I've number 11's tomorrow we'll go through 12 and then we'll see what happens but through God's blessing I'm an, able to be an example to the folks at work. I mean, I could go on talking. I know you said 10 minutes, That's all right. but lean into your family here. Get, get a prayer circle going. I have um, literally people praying around the world. The missionaries I visited when I was in college are praying. There's folks here that are praying. A lot of you, some of you guys I don't know, a lot of you guys I do know, but the support from Calvary and Chuck and the people here has been amazing support from family lean into them lean into that legacy and be bold I mean how many how many folks know who Joe Gibbs is used to be head coach of the Redskins has a NASCAR racing team but has a strong profession you can ask people you don't know to pray for you in your circumstance I called Joe Gibbs racing and said hey I don't want anything from you, but can you guys pray? They have a whole, I didn't know this, they have a whole faith and outreach team. And she's like, yeah. She goes, do you mind if we put it on there? We have a channel between all the garages. I'm like, have all the garages pray. Lean into how God leads you, and he's going to provide that peace. I mean, it's. Cool, thanks. How can we be uh, praying for you? Um. <laughs> First of all, healing for sure. I mean, we serve the great physician. 
Um, while I, you know, the ultimate end goal is, yeah, we want the cancer completely gone. But the other part of it is, as we pray, as you pray for me, I, and I appreciate that, pray that I don't shrink back. I want to be that light that shines. God has given me this for a reason or allowed it to, he knows. He knew before I was born that at 55, I would have pancreatic cancer. The choice is, am I going to use it for God or not? I don't want to shrink back from that. I want to be able to, whoever I come across, even in the simple things, being bold. Because there's nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose in being bold. Cool. Well, I'd like to take a minute. Christian, would you mind coming up and praying for Jeff? Christian and Jeff are pretty close as well from camp days. and um, So you just join us and we'll pray over Jeff real quick and then we'll let him go. Why don't we, let's, let's stand together. If you're in the overflow room, stand up with us. We're going to stand with Jeff, physically reminding us that we're standing with Jeff. We're praying over Jeff. We're going to uh, ask the Lord to do a mighty work here. Father God, thank you for the peace that passes understanding of knowing your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that no matter when our life uh, begins and ends in this world, if we are in you, we are secure in our salvation. We thank you that Jeff knows that salvation and the greatest question mark in anyone's life, Jeff already has the answer. And the answer is the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation he has given by faith and uh, is something available for all of us. We do pray clearly, boldly before you, God, because you, we know you are able to do this. We pray for Jeff that you would heal him fully, knowing you are able, trusting you are uh, willing and uh, asking and pleading on our brother's behalf for his life to be preserved and elongated for the sake of his family. But all the more, Father, we say no matter what, we trust you and we know you because we know you are good according to your word and how you've revealed yourself to us. Father, we thank you for the testimony of peace and the fruit that is going to come out of believers' lives, even in very difficult circumstances like this. Thank you for the testimony and the, the living lesson that is Jeff's life right now to all of us. We celebrate and praise you through him. And uh, we pray these things knowing that we all have security in the work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you guys are looking for something or a song that's really going to drive your peace and praise, go listen to Praise. Um, look it up on there. It is an um, amazing song. I, I sent it to Larry and Christian to link to it. But when you look at the lyrics, it'll take you from If you have any doubt or you're feeling down, it'll pick you up instantly. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, Larry, let's switch to the end. Oh, this one's not good. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, you're welcome. There we go. Okay, um, one thing that's been interesting, and I don't know what you heard from Jeff. I'm sure we all got different things. But for me, the interesting part is is that peace that Jeff has in this, um, to me, has been very apparent. As I've talked to him several times, I've walked away from conversations with Jeff here. I'm like, not only does that guy have peace, but he seems to be, like, embracing this. It seems to be a center of joy for you in your life, even this cancer that you've been that, that the Lord has entrusted you with. And so um, just thank you for your example in that. Um, as he was sharing his story, I was like, he sees God's providence in all of this, all those little examples that he brought up. And I think that's what's bringing peace in his life is he just sees God's hand in all of this. And so thanks for sharing, Jeff. We appreciate it. And so I hope that's um, a good applicable takeaway for you, for the rest of us today. Um, so here's a question. We we're going to spend some time on it. We'll skip it. But um, if you just want to s snap a picture, remember this, it'd be good for us to go over. But in what circumstances of your life have you realized the need for peace or witnessed the fruit of peace in your life? And so uh, I asked earlier, we all raised our hands, so we all recognize that need. I would also, you know, be mindful of the times that you've recognized that God has brought peace in your life, where maybe you reacted in a way that you normally wouldn't. And so don't miss that opportunity to praise him in that time as well. So, so that's peace. Um, 
We also looked at patience, and so we're going to do a little review of patience today as well. And so as we review that, some of the biblical definitions, um, I think we had two biblical definitions from patience. Endurance, constancy, steadfastness, perseverance, especially as shown in bearing troubles and ills. So in times in your life when trouble has come into your life or when there's been hardship into your life, how are you having patience in that hardship? And so these are circumstances that are outside of your control that are brought in, right? And how are you having patience in those? And so these are some verses we looked at last week uh, in reference to that. The second one was forbearance, long-suffering, slowness in avenging wrongs. And so this one was specific to how are other people treating you? How are you having patience with other people, especially when they're treating you wrongly, right? And so those are both um, biblical definitions and times when we need to have patience. So I'll ask you again, how many times in the last week or two weeks have you recognized a need to have patience in your life? And again, I would say if, if everyone's not raising their hands, you're, you're living life uh, sleepwalking. Um, I, I give you an example of this one. Um, personally, I probably shouldn't share this, but it's fine. I was uh, taking I was taking lunch and I I was gonna go to um, I was gonna go to Lake Geneva. The Brewers were playing a day game, so I was like I'm gonna go watch a couple innings during lunch. I'm gonna go, so I was gonna go to Champs and have a burger and watch. So I parked behind Champs and I didn't remember if we had if you had to pay for parking in Lake Geneva. And I know there's a time you do, there's a time you don't. I wasn't sure, so I park my car and I run inside just to ask um, ask them in there, do we have to pay for parking this time of year? And they're like. Yeah, and they're pretty stingy on it, so you should probably get out. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to order my burger, and I'm going to go out. So I was in the building for three minutes. I'm telling you, it was three minutes. I go back out, and the parking attendant's already walking away from my truck. I was like, you've got to be kidding. Um, so I feel like that was when I was wronged or I wasn't treated right. <laughs> I was not as patient as I should have been. So, But it was good for me because I was like, yeah, studying patience. All right, Lord, I probably... Uh, wasn't the most patient this time. I did run her down. <laughs> I chased her down. It's like, come on, three minutes. But uh, it was good for me because it's like we're not always going to pass the test, right? It's like, yeah, it's, it's just a good reminder of like, all right, this is an opportunity to, you know, to be an ambassador for Christ and to show patience. And so I'll try to do better next time. So that was my example. Um, I'm going to give you three or four minutes, not a ton of time this time, but again, just discuss among your groups an example of patience from the life or words of Jesus. So I'll give you a few minutes.
Yeah. All right. Now we should be good. Can you guys hear me in the other room if somebody wants to? Okay. You can, wow. You might want to turn it down now. I'll, we'll just hold it. Okay. So um, thank you for being patient. You guys are doing a good job. doesn't bother me, but. All right. So I want to, um, as I was saying, when I was studying, you know, as I just thought of the life of Jesus, it was easier for me to come up with the peace part, right? Because Jesus spoke about peace a lot. And he, he spoke about patience, but... For me, it wasn't as obvious, like right offhand without giving you guys any verses or anything like, what are the examples of Jesus being patient? I heard a couple of really good answers, though. Um, I'm not going to repeat them now because our next guest, I think he has, he's going to say some of the same stuff, so I don't want to steal his thunder. But, Dad, you want to go ahead and come up? So my dad's going to come up. Uh, his name's Fred. Uh, he's been in this class for a while. And my dad has been, I've always known him to be a very patient man, so... Um, I would not have necessarily thought of him to come up, but with what's been going on in his life for the last couple of years, I thought he'd be a good example. Um, so, man of many words here, I'll have to get him out of him. But uh, what you want to share with us what's, um, I guess it's been almost two years, but share your, the circumstances of what the Lord's been walking you through. We'll We're going to have to share this. Okay. okay uh, <coughs> it's July 5th of 22. I was working here at church. We were beginning all this new construction, and we were in the destruction part, tearing down walls and stuff. I was here one day filling in for Jim. He was on vacation, and he left me a list of things I could do. And one of the things was tear down the wall in the old office, Jim and Bob's old office. I was in there working alone that day, tearing down drywall, <clears throat> and I was doing the top piece. So I was up on a stepladder reaching and pulling and yanking and for some reason the ladder took off on me so I fell, got my leg tangled up in the ladder, it was an aluminum ladder and I cut my foot off basically. So that began the journey there. Um, I went to Elkhorn and they didn't touch me, they sent me on up to Summit. I had the surgery. <coughs> The surgeon told uh, my wife and son who was with us that he had three options. Um, they would be able to put the ankle, the foot back on, replace. Um, they would be able to do surgery and just reconnect everything. Obviously, I would have plates and screws inside. If he couldn't do that, they would have this way of connecting everything but all the metal would be outside of my ankle so I'd be like I have an erector set built around my ankle or the third uh, <coughs> option was to finish cutting the foot off so I went in not knowing I woke up in bed the next morning first thing I looked down and I saw two <laughs> God was good <laughs> But anyway, it has been a long journey. Um, one of the things that the main thing, or not main, but one of the big things that we knew God was really involved in this and helping us was uh, when I started therapy, the first therapy I had was going to be in-home therapy. And there's excitement about therapy because you're going to be able to start moving and start doing something, but there's also anxiousness about it. You know, what's going to happen? Who's the person going to be coming into our house? So Jerry and I were both kind of anxious about that, but the morning of therapy, the morning the therapist was coming, we were sitting there anxiously waiting. The doorbell rang, and we both looked up to the door, and it was Lisa standing there. And so that, you know, we just broke into praise, you know, that God did that, brought us someone that we knew and loved and trusted. So, but after that therapy, I went into the regular therapy. I went to the Delavan therapist place, went through 16 weeks of therapy. I was recovering. I was really doing well, strengthening my ankle and everything. And in... February of the following year of 22, I got up on a Saturday morning, normally woke up, 
got out, went to get out of bed, but when I stepped on the floor, I fell because I couldn't put any weight on my ankle. It was just an instant thing that went back to bad. <laughs> So we went to the emergency room in Elkhorn and got x-rays and they told us that none of the screws or metal plates or anything had moved, that everything seemed normal. So I had to get a doc uh, appointment with my surgeon and we got that <clears throat> like pretty quick, like within a week I think we were able to get in to see him. Well, two days before that appointment, he called, his office called us and said he's not going to see me. And he referred me to a foot and ankle specialist. So we had to switch doctors, went to the specialist. She checked it out, did all x-rays and her tests and everything. And she came in the room and said, well, I've got arthritis setting in the bones and the And there's only one option for fixing it an ankle replacement. So we had to prepare for that, go through that. Um, I had to have a, two surgeries for that because she had to go in first to remove some of the screws and stuff that were in there that were in the way of what the ankle replacement needed. So I had to have that surgery, had to wait six weeks to heal from that then do another surgery, have the ankle replacement. And that was in May I had that surgery, so I went through another summer of physical therapy, another summer of actually healing, getting stronger, being able to do things again. And then last November the pain started coming back slowly again. And so since then, I've been seeing the doctor every six weeks. And pretty much every time I see her, she says, pull back more, pull back more. So that's where we are right now. I'm at the stage where I can do some exercising. I basically, what I'm allowed to do is swim or bike on a stationary bike and do some walking and driving. but when the pain starts, then get in the boot. So I'm spending more than half a day in the boot every day and able to do some stuff. So that's where I'm at right now. Cool. So briefly, just, I, I know not everybody knows you that well, but like, could you describe your lifestyle before this happened? And so I think the patience part for me watching you has been knowing the change that it's been. So um, sitting still for you, I know, has been a, tr a challenge. So just kind of briefly describe that, maybe. Okay, so my whole life I've been very active in sports. Uh, just whatever sports a man can do throughout my whole life, I was involved in it. In the last decade or two of my life, I was running, biking, and swimming as a triathlete. So that's a lot of activity every day to keep in shape to be able to run triathlons. When I had this accident and uh, when I, they sent me home they said the, f the first thing they told me is I'd be 12 weeks sitting on the couch. And for someone like me that's like a pretty hard slap in the face. And I started praying myself, and I know family and friends, and I know this whole church was praying for me. And that's the only way I got through it, believe me. Just knowing that everyone cared, everyone was praying. God cared, and God was, was faithful. I mean, we don't know why the accident happened, but God was still with me, and God was going to get me through it. So it was a long haul sitting in, on that couch. <laughs> So I asked, I asked him last week if he, would, if he would share some of this. And so my question is, looking back now, um, did you recognize in the moment that God was working on patience in you? Did you recognize in the moment you had to have it? Or was it just you were kind of taking it day by day? Looking back now, how do you see patience working itself out um, in your situation? Okay, it was instant, obviously, because for me to sit, was just something that didn't happen. And it improved, I think, day to day. You know, not only was 
did I feel God's presence instantly, that I was able to sit there. And then from day to day, week to week, month to month, it just, it grew. I knew, I knew that patience was uh, a fruit of the Spirit, and it was something that I could not do on my own. It was something that God had put in me, in the Spirit in me, and God did it for me. I mean, f with the fruit of the Spirit, there's nothing we can do to grow it or establish it. It's what God does inside of you. And uh, he definitely did that for me. Yeah. How many puzzles have you put together since then? <laughs> Way too many. Cool, thanks. For, is there anything else you wanted to share? Anything the Lord put, put on your heart that you wanted to say? I just think uh, I shared in our small group, whenever I'm thinking about patience and how it is a struggle for me or not a struggle, I, I just constantly remind myself of the patience that Jesus showed towards me being the sinner that I am and the patience that he showed on Good Friday that he went through that whole day, never grumbled, never complained, tried, never tried to defend himself in any way. I mean, what better example of patience are we going to see than that? So, Cool, thanks. I think one thing I've heard, you can stay here, I'm going to pray for you, but one thing that I've heard is don't pray for patience, right? It's like you don't know what the Lord's going to put, put you through, but... Uh, Anyway, I just, I appreciate you sharing and getting up here. I know this isn't um, your cup of tea getting in front of people either. So uh, let me pray for, pray for Fred. And Heavenly Father, thanks, Lord, for the way that you work in us. I thank you for your sovereign hand in the, the circumstances of our lives, Heavenly Father. And um, I thank you for what you've taught my dad and, and my mom and even us as we've watched him, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the patience that he's shown. Um, I do pray for continued healing in his ankle and foot, Heavenly Father. And uh, even now, as he continues to have to have the patience, Lord, he's not getting the answers that he'd like, um, I pray that your spirit would work in him and that he would bear the fruit of patience that you produce in him, Heavenly Father. We love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Jeff. All right. So question um so that's our patience and circumstance in what circumstance of your life have you realized the need for patience or witnessed the fruit of patience in your life so we do have four or five minutes here um i just i appreciate the opportunity to have jeff and my dad and just as we encourage one another as brothers and sisters and share each other's stories it is encouraging so give you three or four minutes in your group um don't hesitate to share what the lord's been working in your life so we'll give you a few minutes
All right. I'm sure some good conversations there as well. So um, that'll, that'll end our um, a study on peace and patience. So we'll be back next week and we'll dig into two other fruit of the spirit, two other characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. I'm going to show you a video now. Dustin um, has come on and he's going to be hosting. I think we're going to be hosting um, something called Secret Church. And so this video is just to kind of promote that. Um, it's not going to answer all your questions, but don't worry about it. It's a secret anyway, so you don't need to know everything. But uh, we're just going to start giving you some promos on this. And so this um, will give you a little idea of what it is. You ready for me th back there, Ben? All right. We've been having trouble with audio, so we'll see if you can hear this one. Well, that was quick. It's, it's, it's really a secret now. This worked. I tested this earlier. We'll give it one more shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll just apologize to Dustin. Oh, my gosh. This shouldn't be this difficult. All right. <laughs> what about this? Replay? <laughs> Just read it. Okay, we're going to try one more time here. Oh, my gosh. Can you tell I'm not, uh, I'm not the tech? I don't think I have it on mute here. Okay, now it's not. So should we try one more time here? This is this is just a train wreck. This Pastor Chuck's not here today. I hope he's not watching this morning. Yeah. We have another video next week. We'll try one more time. Um, yeah, you can just read the subtitles, I guess. You know what? We'll play both videos next week. That's all right. That's it. <laughs> You're just going to have to be patient and wait for next week. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, um, yeah, I thank you for the opportunity this morning that you've given us to gather and to hear um, a couple of examples of how you're working in our lives, Heavenly Father, how you work, how your spirit gives us your fruit to bear and so I praise you, Lord, for the example that these two men have given us this morning, for the work that you've done that only you can do, Lord. We give you the glory and honor and credit and praise. And so I just pray that you continue to work that in these two, get two men's lives and the rest of us as well as we work out the circumstances in our life. I pray that you give us peace and patience, not for our own good, Lord, but that we may be ambassadors for you, for your kingdom and for your glory. We pray these things in your name.